It's about time. Let us begin. Eager to make new friends, Mr. Headbag climbed onto the desk. What is teacher doing? He wondered. <laughs> Don't mind me, teach. Oh, oh, why aren't you moving? Yes, yes, yes. Move, move, move. Run, run, run. sneak at all times. You can't just normal walk. Normal walking will... Mr. Headbag made note not to walk at his normal pace. At least not while the grown-ups were around. It would seem walking at his normal pace would draw their attention. his way past jaws of God knows what. Mr. Headback curiously watched the grown-up. Just what was she doing? Oh, look at that! She turned all the way around. Let's give him a peek. Writing himself... Mr. Headbag sprinted and jumped. Hurry, Mr. Headbag, hurry now. Oh, that was not quick enough. Lovely. Mr. Headbag, tiring of dying over and over again to the teacher's cruel administrations, decided to go for a speed run. God. Okay. 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 Mr. Headbag decided the best route was to simply take it slow. There'd be plenty of time later to run around when he was holding his he was holding hands with his unnamed friend again. Then he won the race, and so it proved. Come, children. Come get your murder. It would seem the joke was on him, for it was he who was to be murdered. What fun! Nope. Once more, the murder was for him. Come along. Murder! Who else would like some murder? Fresh from the pot, just for you! I have some fresh murder! 
cried out Mr. Headbag, eager to make new friends. Oh, look, would you like some murder? Here's some for you and you, young man. Oh, you gave me some murder. How kind of you. Once more, he drew his weapon, looking for the young girl to murder. You there, come get some... Okay. That couldn't be. No, it didn't happen that way. It happened this way. He picked up the hammer, made his way down the corridor, waited for her to pause, and swung! Murder! Did the same to the young boy. Only he was murdered again! The bad part was that he had to do it over and over again. The good part was that it was murder. Each time, it felt even better than the last. Come, child. Come get your murder. Oh, why always? If there was any part for him to repeat, at least it was this one. His favorite. The one that allowed him to murder the children. When he got the timing right. Onward he went, eager for the first yes! Delicious murder, and the second, oh, how rewarding that was! Yes, finally, he said. Who else? I come bringing murder. Murder? Would you like some? Oh no! Luckily, the game was kind and. Oh no, the game was not kind. It's alright, he said. Murder doesn't come natural to me. I've simply got to get used to the timing of it. I said, Mr. Headback. Eager to practice his murdering once more. Pause and swing. Okay, that also works. Dragging the ball peen hammer, he waited his next victim. Out of the locker he sprung and was murdered thoroughly. As was this. Nope. Hala da da, he picked up the hammer. And he went down to commit some more murder. Murder! And for this other child, murder as well. Across the carpet, and peekaboo, said the child, eager to be murdered. Another child sprung from behind the white and got murdered him. Da da down the hallway, ready to commit some murder. Swing! Here the child would chase, and then pause and swing. And then he'd walk along, and wouldn't you know it, a new friend! Murder time! Murder time! Murder time! How good that the game was forgiving with the timing. See, oh, the raised board meant a trap was coming. He made sure to dodge it, already seeing the swing, the rope attached. Luckily, Mr. Headbag was growing wise to the traps and tricks of these naughty children. You there, what are you doing to that poor? Oh, is that his friend? How dare you! And you! Dear friend, I'll free you. I'll free you this instant. Dropping the hammer. He checked on his friend. Are you all right, friend? It's me. It's your Mr. Headbag. Come along. No use. 
having you on the floor. Are you all right? I don't suppose you're eager to continue playing our game, said Mr. Headbag. Angela? She gave him a look, nonplussed. Oh, right. Well, take my hand. Let's continue on. I was so worried for you. I'm so glad you're safe once more. Ooh, yum, yum. Come along, friend. Indeed, it would seem we do better together. Wouldn't you agree? Taking her hand. Oh, the narrator stopped to thank Artie Milkmans for the 100 bits. Artie Milkmans wish to tell the narrator that the bits were for the successful murder. Thank you. Very merry many thank yous to you. Hey, thanks. A little B. Mason has donated ten dollars. Oh, little B. Mason. Little B. Mason said no message, just all the love. Oh, how kind of you, little B. Mason. Together, the two escaped eager to be away from that wretched teacher and the thing broke all of a sudden nope thing broke all of a sudden no good Grandly, you got my heart and soul. Do 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 do. Oh, look, a thing. Ooh, yum yum. Little B. Mason donated a thousand bits. Thank you so much for the thousand bits, Little B. Mason. Deeply appreciated. didn't gather the attention of the grown-ups, Mr. Headbag wasn't sure what would. A key? Did he have a key? He did not. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. What was that sound? What was that girl doing? It would seem there's a little girl out here trying to unlock a frog.
Peekaboo. <sighs> Mr. Headbag was perplexed. As happy as he was to commit the murder, it was no fun when they weren't aware that they were being murdered. Leaving the freshly locked frog to be, the two proceeded towards the locked door. Oh, good. More children. The headbag dropped the weapon and stood perplexed, staring, unable to speak. He had never before felt so in love. Looking at his unnamed friend with a new level of respect and admiration. Genuine, heartfelt affection. They carried on. was that playing such beautiful music, he wondered. But alas, that was not for them to figure out just yet. Instead, they climbed the stairs. With each new step, it would appear that music grew more and more discordant. of rose in his cheeks. Not for the first time he was grateful for the bag on his head. <coughs> Mr. Headbag looked on in horror. It was his old friend, the teacher. When will I be done with you, he said to himself. but he crept by.
was lowered and ready for him. Could he make it back in time? Without being discovered? I needed... A pushable platform. Look! Oh, look! The teacher friend had finally found them! Oh, good! She was catching up! His head back made sure to hurry as he made his escape! Run along, Mr. Headback! Run along! Mmm! Delightful! Finally, they were out of the building again. And they were in the rain and in the, in the dumpster and quite literally in the trash, but it was still better than where they were. His friend seemed quite affected by the rain. Mr. Headbag offered her her many hats, his many hats, but she didn't seem to want any. Instead, he took her hand and Pull her along. Surely we'll find you something to protect you from this rain soon. Probably a canonical yellow rain jacket of some sort. Wouldn't that be nice? If I can find one, I'll get it for you. And it'll be the finest rain jacket ever. Francine, he said, venturing another guess. She shivered, but didn't answer. an ominous gap played terrible images in his mind but he paid them no heed simply keep moving forward and everything will be alright offering the warmth of his hand again the two continued to run suits. is happening. Aha! 
How clever are we? Come along, dear friend. I've got you. Oh, good. You've got yourself. You look at this. Another TV boy. Would you like this to wear as a hat? He said. Well, if you won't use it as a hat, then might I recommend we name him... The USS Evangeline. Come along, the USS Evangeline. We'll find a good place for you to call home. What about this gutter? Onward and onward he carried the USS Evangeline. Sure, he would find a proper home for it. Like, for example, just some random place on the ground. There. Just as I promised. A yellow raincoat, just for you. Oh, and how it fits. Oh. Yes, he said. Hood up. I think I quite like it with a hood up. How do you like it? She, she seemed eager to continue. Though she hid a smile on her face. friend. Oh. Despite her new clothing, she seemed very eager to get out of the rain. Careful with the talk, please, in the chat about the story and spoilers and all that. <laughs> Getting dangerously close, y'all. I didn't mean you, Daniel. I'm very, very sensitive to spoilers, even something that's even mildly spoilery, like saying that it's a prequel, even though it's semi-obvious that it's a prequel at this point. I don't like that kind of stuff. So, please, do me a favor. Do not do any of that stuff. They proceeded into the new building. Glad to be dry, but not happy with their surroundings. It would appear they were in some kind of prison.
he marveled at the way she so eagerly and quickly flew through the air. He'd never met anyone like her. Didn't think he ever would. Down and down and down he went. Good friend Key is in chat. The narrator exclaimed, quite excited to see his dear friend, wondering if they had anything to say at all about his horrible take on their natural accent. Still, embarrassed as he was, the narrator was quite happy to see his good friend Key, and recommended that all in his chat do themselves the favor of checking out their streams and their amazing art. Ooh, yum yums. Oh, yum yums indeed. Peyton Miller donated a hundred bits, saying, I know this probably isn't the right place for this, but since my dad's family was highly conservative, is coming down for my high school graduations, I just realized I'm going to have to be dead named, and now I just got hit with a lot of depression. Well, you're right, Peyton Miller, this isn't the right place for it, but I'm sorry you have to go through that. That doesn't sound pleasant. Uh, it'll be a quick weekend, and then you'll be free of them. Oh, no. Mr. Dead... Mr. Head Headbag said, unintentionally making quite a mess of things. Oh, how nice, Mr. Headbag said, holding the glowing canister. chat asked the narrator if it was okay to ask what the goal of the game is. The narrator answered to the best of his abilities, not having the foggiest clue what the goal of the game was. I believe the goal is to go from left to right. Occasionally going from right to left, but mostly going left to right. Quite like a prison hospital to put you in good spirits, especially one that was dark and hopefully vacated. Oh. An open 
door. A drink? Uh... Abigail? She stared at him blankly. Not even close, he, won he thought to himself. TV called to him, and once more he could do nothing but answer the sirens beckoning. Peyton Miller gifted a sub, and the narrator was quite thankful. Very merry thank you to you, Peyton Miller. How do I do this? Once again he found himself in that curious hallway, twisted and warped as it was. He made his way towards that door, racing as fast as he could. If only he could see what was behind it, perhaps he'd know. He'd know why he was here, who he was, what he was doing here. What was... Once more, his friend freed him. From his trance. For the first time, Mr. Headback gave a good look at his surroundings, realizing they were surrounded by mannequins, unfinished bodies. I'll need to know your name soon, he said to his new friend. I need to know who to thank. Mera anime, that is warning number one. Their names are Mr. Headbag and Unnamed Friend. Thank you very much. So many things. Oh, teddy bear with a key in it. Good to know. <laughs> Little people they were. Little nightmares, some might say. Oh, look at the little monkey. Look at the little monkey. All right, would you like to trade? I do quite like your duck. 
as the hit bag said. A touch of rose on his cheeks. He was never much of a flirt. Hey, why, why, no? What? Is it just me, or was there a skull inside the duck? Like the body of the duck. Ooh, that's creepy. That is creepy. The head bag lined up all the stuffed animals for the x-ray. They made for quite the grim procession. Excuse me, friend. Skull in her toy, and the key in mine, thought Mr. Headback. What a mismatched pair we make. Hmm. How was he to open it, he wondered. Bunny. Um. Ooh, yum yum. 
The narrator looked over to notice that Haraya Place had donated 500 bits. Haraya Place said, I do be having little nightmares too. How's it going, homie? The narrator was quite happy to see a familiar name and was quite grateful for all the bits. Very merry thank you to you, Haraya Place. left to us is the elevator. Hefting his key-laden friend, he made for the elevator. You'll be a good bunny, won't you? Thank you so much for your sacrifice. With that, he pulled the lever and let the bunny burn to cinders. Bunny made the mistake of also trusting that Mr. Headbag was out for anyone but himself. Taking the key, t Mr. Headbag tucked it close to him. And with a smile, he noted how warm it was. <laughs> Say hi to Little Box and Blue Shoe Bunny. You join the long list of. Those that were foolish enough to be inanimate and of use to Mr. Headbag. Curious. Ooh, yum yums. Kim Carter donated 200 bits, noted the narrator. Kim Carter said, This is the Corgi to ward off spoilers. Have fun. The narrator continued on, playing with a smile. Certain that no one would spoil anything now that they've had the Corgi to ward off spoilers. It, no skull. Hmm. Hmm. Curious. Curious. Come along, friend. We've a lock to unlock. Much like that frog was unlocked. Together, armed with a key, the two raced upstairs. 
eager to what, see what they could find. was a limb closet. He could tell he was going to be very fond of this place. He thought to himself with much sarcasm. What are you looking at, friend? Is it this one? Something bothering you? Care for a shoe? Eileen, he said. Or exclaimed. She looked away. TV child for him to swallow. Ah, yes. With each one, the migraines go stronger. Said Mr. Headbag, wincing to himself. Mr. Headback paused to wonder why the body without head or legs needed to be strapped down. It would seem his question was answered. could do nothing but stare in disgust as the spider-like hand eagerly awaited his descent. This one, thought Mr. Headbag to himself, quite perplexed. Hmm. Did 
Nice one. Again and again, he threw himself through one scenario after the next. Certain he could find one wherein he remained the victor. Ah. Grab? No. Grab? No. Grab? 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 No. Grab? Nope. Oh, but. Was it a matter of light? No, it was not. The light did nothing to it. Good. Oh, oh, oh. I think that's the solution. Is there anything... Is there anything back here that I think might... What? Uh... <laughs> okay. The narrator had no such... No time for such juvenile thoughts. so much Peyton Miller gifted a gift sub how kind of them
Pick up, pick up. Nope. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Nope. Hmm. Squishy little squishums. If you're going to use Yuri's name, at least spell it correctly. I'd also rather you not use his name. <laughs> like, why keep bringing him up? There's something more up here that I didn't try before. Nope. That's not it. No, you're just spelling it wrong. <laughs> he doesn't have another name, you're just not spelling it correctly. All the way through. Oh, I don't see anything here to use against them. I use the Do anything I was thinking about. The narrator found himself in the vast world of the internet, where he found the solution to the problem, which apparently was to just keep running. Not like that, for sure. Simple as that. And here he was trying to overcomplicate things. That is so like you, Mr. Headbag. The narrator said with a chuckle, eagerly turning the next page. Mr. Headbag found himself in a room of operation. Elsewhere, the hand eagerly searched for him. Surely there's got to be a way to escape. Think, Mr. Headbag, think! Creature was all but upon him. Eep. Oh. But, uh, 
He finally had his hammer. Confound you thing! Oh, how delightful it'll be to smash you, he thought to himself. You didn't know that you were coming for a brand new bag of murder today, did you? He said, crashing the hammer down on the hand with a satisfying thud. One more, just for good measure. Go on. Good. Taste it. Taste the bugger flavor. Mr. Headbag said to himself, continuously smashing the hammer into the palm, caring not if it was already dead, wanting simply, endlessly crashing his hammer into its body like the dying thrusts of a lover. Spending the last of his seed. Very good. Da 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 do. And up, and up, beep, ba, ba, dee, do, boo. And just what are you doing? He said to his friend. What were you doing? Oh, breaking its fingers. Of course. A wonderful pastime. Hey! <laughs> the narrator couldn't help but chuckle at his friend's pun. Zanzer's world said in the chat, Finally, you got the upper hand. More nightmares await us, Mr. Headbank said, eagerly entering the next section. What are they feeding? What is this? Corn? Mrs. Corn, what are you doing out here? You know you don't belong on the plate. You know full well you belong in a socket. Nope. Can I squeeze through? Nope. I feel like I should be able to. Peyton Miller donated 100 bits, saying, Sorry for doing a lot tonight, but how is this game becoming actually spoopy? Thank you for the bits, Peyton Miller. Oh. Oh my. Enough out of you. No, 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 no.
I don't like this, thought Mr. Headbag to himself. Not quite trusting the game's controllers. Or his flashlight, for that matter. No, no, no. That's enough for you. Why, though? Why, though? Can can you answer me that? Why? Mr. Headback found himself at the precipice of a situation he didn't want to be a part of. Fiddle-faddle, he thought to himself. Flicker. Good. Oh, look. A penis. Oh, many friends. Lucky me, thought Mr. Headbag. Eager to make new acquaintances wherever he went. Oh, this is just the best. I like this a lot. Uh huh. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, sure, yep, yep, okay. We're gonna go ahead and keep you right over there. That's fine. Mr. Narrator did his best to keep his cool. Luckily, neither he nor Mr. Headbag were actually afraid. Oh, good! So close! Mm-hmm! Very nice! Very nice! So many friends! So many varying distances! I'm happy for me! That's enough out of all of you, thank you! Very good. Might as well see what is going on down here. Nothing that's great. I love it so much. You'll protect me, won't you? Mr. Cheese? Mr. Headbag clung to Mr. Cheese. Two ships in a storm they were. Oh, goodness me! How lucky I am to be here with all of my friends! Mr. Headbag sung out in happiness. Don't oh, take the cheese! Come, Mr. Cheese. They can't hurt us if we work together. 
keep running, just keep running, just keep running. Oh, nice. What do we like to do? We like to run. Pam Town in chat said something quite curious to both Mr. Headbag and the narrator. You may need to abandon the cheese. What kind of place do you think this is? A place where we simply abandon the cheese as soon as it seems advantageous to us? No! We never abandon our cheeses, thank you very much. I will take this cheese to the grave. Oh no, I will not. Never mind, I'm abandoning the cheese. La 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 la. Take me, cheese. Mr. Cheese, do not listen to them in chat. They do not have your best interest in mind, not like me. Be gone, cheese! I'm free from you! Cheese or no, there is no safety for me. Alright, Mr. Cheese. I'll try this one alone. Wish me luck. Personally, Mr. Cheese, I think I was doing better with you. Come, Mr. Cheese. They know nothing of camaraderie and loyalty. Together we will make it through this gauntlet. You will not have my cheese, mongrels! No, do not! Take it! Oh no! What do I do there? I take the cheese and I take the cheese. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. That's not fun. Oh, me, oh, my. Oh, pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie is delicious. How am I supposed to do this and hold the run button? Back. Onward he ran, Mr. Headbag going quite accustomed to the direction of this, of his, uh, escape run. Maybe I don't need to run at all, maybe I just walk at a leisurely pace, keep the flashlight out. What the fuck did I just say? There's clearly light on your... 
the narrator took a moment to gather his wits and readied himself for another sterling attempt. to ran and ran and ran and ran. I'm upwards, thank you. The narrator thanked Mr. Headbag for finally agreeing to his terms. Good. Don't drop the soap, as the old adage went. Hi, boop. Nya ichi ni san nya arigato. Come to me! Empower my migraines, TV child. That's an actual body. That's an actual person body. You're a great, big, horrible, scary jerk, you know that? Mr. Headback exclaimed. Glad to finally have access to the wheelchair he needed. to turn on him. Ooh, yeah. Great. 
great, 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 great. Indeed, said the narrator. Though this game is very gorgeous, do not underestimate the power and the environment, the setting, and the gorgeousness of... Why? The flashlight is... to that, I say. Thank you so much, dear friend. You will never believe the day I've had, he said, smiling through the pain. You grab this one. Yes, yes. Excellent. said, taking her hand. He was eager to have her fingers to hold once more. Oh. have flashlight. As much as I enjoy holding your hand, I'm afraid I'll need my wits about me for this next part. the two went despite the horribly terrifying sounds.
It's enough out of you. Your friend, watch out. I'll protect you. Keep at it, friend. I've got this one. Good. Go ahead. Keep pulling. I'll keep murdering. Oh, need help? What a good pair we make, he said, looking at him with a smile. He was happy to find that she was smiling in return. He thought to guess another name, but thought better of it. Better to let the moment hang in the air. Look at all those familiar faces. That figure, Mr. Headbag wondered. But I knew there was no time. They had to escape. Oh, good. What? What is Good. saw his old friend, Little Brick. Knowing that he wouldn't let him down, he snatched him up and made back for the switch.
Oh no, friend, what are you doing? He needed a key. Wherever would he find one in a place like this? Wait, 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 friend. Friend, wait, wait. You've got the right plan of it, just not the right timing, he said with a smile. God, am I stuck? able to run ever since getting stuck in that position. Okay. Okay, good.
Ah. Ah. Yeah, see, my running's all bugged out. Ever since I got st that stuck in that corner spot. Over the garden wall has followed, exclaimed the narrator. I am a huge fan of that series. Over the garden wall has got to be one of my cult favorites. feeling I have to call it soon though because I'm stuck in this buggy state and as soon as I start a chase sequence or something I'll be done for what's wrong with your leg Oh, Mr. Headbag, it seemed to experience trauma that was simply uncurable. He figured that he would at least return the key to his friend and see if they couldn't continue on without him. We're going to go ahead and call it here, dear friends. While the narrator and Mr. Headbag both enjoyed themselves quite a lot tonight, uh, they feel as if they've covered quite enough ground for now. The narrator, it is best to thank everyone for attending, for all the gifted subs, for all the donations, for all of the bits, and for all of the love. Dearest thanks to his captive audience. He looked forward to seeing them again tomorrow for the next installment of Little Nightmares 2. Big thanks, of course, to Motion Daniel. Bringing down the Motion Daniel Baniel Hammer. Alright, y'all. <laughs> you have a great night. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for all the love, all the generosity. Thanks to all my friends for swinging by, for the raids, for the hosts.